Hello, Henrietta High School students. I hope you are having a great day. If you don't know who I am, I am Miss Clark. I am the proud superintendent of Henrietta ISD. And I wanted to, um, I was kind of hoping that I was gonna be able to come over and talk to you in person, but it just didn't really kind of work out on the schedule. So I wanted to record a video just to talk to you just a little bit about some things that are happening in Henrietta ISD and just in the town of Henrietta. So most of you have probably heard something, but maybe you haven't about the fact that voting is coming up pretty soon. We have an election day that is coming up on May 4th easy to remember. May the 4th be with you, right? Like bad joke. But anyway, it is coming up on May 4th and many of our students at the high school can be registered and hopefully you already are registered to vote. So the biggest thing I want to talk to you about today is your right to vote and how important that is that you register to vote. And some of you are going, I'm not even... I'm not able to, re to register to vote yet. I'm too young, but I want you to hear this now so that you do um, really move into that quickly when you can. So first of all, you have to be 18 on election day to be able to vote. So election day, as I just told you, is May 4th. So let's say that you don't turn 18 till May 1st, then you can go ahead and register to vote. You just have to be 18 as of that election day, which is May 4th. So if you're already 18, hopefully, I know that um, in our classes over there, we were trying to get the voter registration cards to you. So if you don't have them, I know that we have them in the office and we have them over here too to make sure that you fill that out and then you have to mail it in. We can't take it from you, okay? So make sure that you do that. And I want you to understand that it's important to vote because the people that we elect or the things that we vote on, they affect us. They make... Uh, that legislators make decisions for us all the time. They make rules. Uh, if you, you know, some of you don't love the rule that you automatically go to DAEP for vaping. Well, our legislators made that rule. Um, so that's actually a state law that we have to follow. So anyway, you really want to think and educate yourself on who the people are that are running. There's a couple of people that are running that it's a runoff. And so that's going to be our senator for our area. So you really want to make sure that you kind of dive into that and learn some information about it. And I think that it's history or research shows itself that our younger population of students um, and young adults in general do not vote. And so that's really, to me, it's sad, right? Because we want to make sure that when we're voting that the entire um, the entire stretch of our population that their voices are heard. And so you're going to hear me say that probably over and over and over. Make sure your voice is heard. My guess is, is that you want people to know how you feel about things. Well, voting is the way to do that. And so it doesn't do us a lot of good to rant about something on social media if we're not willing to go to the polls and vote on it. So we want to make sure that you know the importance of voting and that you do, again, get registered to vote. So this week is the deadline. That's why I'm making this video to submit to you is April 4th is the deadline to vote. Today's the third. So that is coming up tomorrow. So you want to make sure you get registered to vote. And then we are actually going to have early voting here at our admin building. And that starts April the 22nd and it goes through April the 30th. So you can vote early so you don't have to do it on election day or you can do it on election day, either one. So remember I've told you, election day, May 4th. So that's coming up too. We will again have on election day, we'll have voting here. There'll be um, voting in Jolly and Lake Arrowhead. We've got some different places that you can uh, drop in to vote. And then the coolest thing that I think people have started doing in the last few years, and you young people definitely understand this, social media, right? So you can get this little cool sticker when you vote, and then 
take a little selfie or have somebody take a picture of you, whatever, with your I voted sticker and shoot that on, on shoot that out on social media and tag me and I'll repost it of you because I'm super proud of you for exercising your right to vote. So, and then I want to make sure to tell you just a little bit about the election that's coming up for the school. And so we have these available in your office. I'm going to drop some more off today to make sure that you have them in your classes when you're watching these videos. But we have an election coming up for what's called a school bond. Okay, so just to understand a little bit about school funding, we have two sides of school funding. We have what's called an M&O, which is a maintenance and operations side, and then we have this INS. And so this INS side is like bond payments and stuff like that. So maintenance and operation is how we pay our teachers, we pay our electric bills, we pay for materials in your classroom, you know, all these different things, right? But the INS side is, let's say that there is something that we cannot purchase. We don't have enough money to purchase just like a brand new school or something. We don't have $35, $36 million just sitting in the bank. We do have what you would think is like a savings account. For us, it's called a fund balance, which we do have as a school. Um, we are required to have a fund balance. So if something did happen, then we have money that's like in savings that we can pull out. So with these two options, these two sides, what happens is, is when we look into building something that we don't have enough money for, we have to go out and we have to um, put those in propositions to ask for a bond, which may increase the taxes of our taxpayers, which is where we're at right now with our school bond. So when you look at these two propositions, just a little bit of history is before I even got here, um, Henrietta ISD had formed a facility committee that came together to look at our facilities and say, is there something we need to address? And there's lots of things that they came up with that need to be addressed. But the biggest thing is, is our junior high, which was built in 1928. So you can imagine the people that went to school there in 1928, and I have some, there's some great pictures on some of these flyers about that. Our kids are going to school in the same building. And so we um, felt like that committee came together and felt like it was time to go ask our community if um, for a approved tax increase for a new building. And so that proposition is a high school building. That high school building would be built over here, right where kind of our football um parking is now. It wouldn't take up all of that. It would take up part part of that. But to bring that over here, it would be able to also, the concept for that is that high school would also be able to double as a press box and stuff. So a really nice facility there for our high school students to move in. And the reason we would want our high school students to move in it is because we would want our junior high students to move into our current high school to allow more room for our elementary. As you know, in junior high, there's only three grade level and in high school, there's four. So this new facility would pull those students off of there, um, off to that campus. And then with only three grade levels in the junior high, it would allow us to take some extra classrooms for our elementary that's been growing too. So um, that's one of the things that we want to make sure in Proposition A, that is for $35 million to build a new high school um, over here. And that would allow the junior high students to move over. Proposition B, which you see here, Proposition B, what the state makes us do is if there's any kind of athletic upgrades, we have to separate those. So um, uh, Proposition B is for athletic upgrades. And so people think, are we just trying to make our athletic facilities look better? No, not necessarily. We're really trying to address safety concerns. So our turf is over 10 years old. And so as if you played sports at all, you know that that turf gets extremely hot. And so, and it also has to pass a test, like it's called a GMAX test, where it has to pass it to say that it's safe for concussions and things like that. So as turf gets older, you have to replace it so that you um, can still pass those GMAX tests. So we're addressing the turf. We also, our track, if you run the track, you know that there's cracks and some holes in that. So address resurfacing the track. And then our stands, which 
have been there for a really long time and are also very difficult for um, some of our older community, maybe some of our community that, um, you know, can't walk as well to get into. So it would address those stands also. So all of those in Proposition B are really to address the safety of the athletic um, facilities over there. So I want you to know, and maybe your teacher can even help you when you're showing this video, is that we have built on our web page, on our home wedge page, there's a little tab up there that says bond information. So it has information, it has videos that I'm continuing to update on there. It has uh, frequently asked questions. It has these two propositions. So I want you to kind of spend a little bit of time, if you can, researching that, especially if you're of age where you can go out and vote because you want to make an informed decision of what, how you vote on this. And then the last part is, is that when I said it's a tax increase, I want you to understand a little bit about school taxes. So school taxes are, are a little bit separate. And so with school taxes, the state came out this last year and approved a tax compression. So our taxes are actually lower than they've been in 19 years. 19 years. That's awesome, right? The tax, uh, the state approved this tax compression. And so with the taxes going down so much and a couple of other things that happened is the um, homestead exemption was increased to $100,000. So currently, if your home is $100,000 or less, you're not even paying school taxes anymore because if you have that homestead exemption. And then our 65 and older group can do what's called a tax ceiling, a tax ceiling freeze of um, kind of addressing their school, their school uh, taxes there through that tax ceiling. So there's some options of some things in town where um, all across the state that people can address their taxes and this doesn't affect their taxes at all. But then there may be others that it's an increase to their tax. But remember, I just told you there's a tax compression where taxes are lower than they've ever been. So even with this asking for this tax increase, their taxes won't go up to as high as they were before the tax compression. And we would get a beautiful new building for our high school students to, um, to have access to and to make really innovative learning possible through some new science labs, some possible new CTE classrooms, a big open space where we could hold banquets and we could, um, you know, the library would look different. So just some really um, neat opportunities. But again, my job is just to give you the facts and for you to make some informed decisions about what you want to do. So I probably have made this video already just a little too long, but the biggest thing I want you to get out of it is I want you to know what's going on with the bond for the school and I want you to get registered to vote. If you are going to be 18 or if you're already 18, but if you're going to be 18 on uh, May 4th, make sure you get registered to make your voice heard. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate you taking just a little bit of time to listen about what is going on in Henrietta ISD. Have a great day.